Since the beginning of mainstream wrestling, there has been a thirst for a more brutal and bloody style in which the participants utilize chains, forks, chairs, and C4 to brutalize their opponents. A select few completely insane people took this style for their own and branded it Deathmatch Wrestling. It didn't take a lot of skill to climb to the top of Deathmatch Wrestling, but it sure took a brass set of balls. Join me, Alex, as I bring together 16 of the craziest bastards in wrestling for the greatest Deathmatch tournament of all time. Alex's Tournament of Heinous Ouchies and Boo-Boos. Hello and welcome back to Alex's tor Tournament of Heinous Ouchies and Boo-Boos. It is a landmine death tournament, deathmatch tournament, that is meant to crown King Death. Now in the first round matches we had... Cactus Jack go against Ian Rotten. Ian Rotten came out on top in that contest. We had Nick Mondo go against June Kasai. Kasai came out on, on top on that match. Madman Pondo versus Raven. Pondo went over. Necro Butcher versus Nick Gage. Nick Gage went over. Uh, Thumbtack Jack versus John Moxley. John Moxley pulled the win out on that one. Uh, Masada versus Terry Funk. And Terry Funk went over his junior uh, in spectacular fashion. Then we had John Zandig go against Bruiser Brody. And Bruiser Brody, despite being the victim of a pretty brutal beatdown in, in the beginning of the match, came back and uh, pretty much stole the match out from under Zandig's nose with a with a very impressive uh, submission back backbreaker. Then we had Wife Beater go against New Jack, <clears throat> and Wife Beater came out on top in that contest. Then in the second round matches, um, we had Ian Rotten go against. Uh, Jun Kasai and Jun Kasai came out on top in that in that contest. Then we had Madman Pondo going against Nick Gage. Nick Gage, uh, despite uh, suffering a lot of uh, punishment at the hands of Madman Pondo, managed to get go over on the on on, uh, on Pondo. Then we had John Moxley go against Terry Funk in a in a in a, in a, in a great match in which, I mean, both men uh, focused on isolated a body part and attempted to uh, to wear that down to a to a submission victory. However, Terry Funk came out on top with a flash pinfall, and then we had Bruiser Brody go against Wife Beater, and uh, Bruiser Brody uh, again showing his resolve despite being beaten down for a large majority of the match, managed to come back at the very last minute and beat Wife Beater. So very, very uh, exciting selection of matches here. And next up in the uh, <coughs> semifinals of this tournament, we're going to have Jun Kasai going against Nick Gage. Let's see who comes out on top. Kasai going for the... Oh, wait, no, it was Nick Gage with the suplex. And there's, oh, into the light tubes goes Nick Gage. Heavy strike from Kasai with the closed fist. Perhaps a double underhook suplex, but it did not work out in Kasai's favor. Gage has got the bat, but he's not, oh, there's the fork. The infamous fork, which has made many uh, appearances during the, the course, course of this tournament. And Gage is just not, Gage is not content until uh, perhaps a, uh, Causing some leakage on uh, Kasai's forehead there. Maybe that's what he's trying to do. Gage is swinging away with that uh, with that kendo stick, but missing. Kasai going for the snap suplex and getting it uh, pretty much full on there. Kasai with multiple headbutts to Nick Gage. Jun Kasai going off the ropes and a devastating kick to the face there from Kasai. Shoulder breaker from Nick Gage. He's got the barbed wire bat swinging but missing. Here's June with the pile driver. Yep, sit out pile driver from June Kasai. Half half Boston Crab there. Gage powers his way out. Knife edge chop barely affected June Kasai. Suplex brain buster from June Kasai. Totally different animal. Much more effective, but Nick Gage is on his feet, however, out. Thrown into the, the light tubes, as is Kasai. 
strikes to the head. Exchanging strikes to the head. Neither man will back down, and Gage is taking off his feet. Kasai is taking off his feet. Gage swinging away with that Louisville slugger there. The fork makes another appearance. Just jamming his head like it's no, like there's no tomorrow. And Kasai's been busted open. Mission accomplished on Gage's part. Neckbreaker from Gage. Vicious headbutts from Kasai. And a shot right to the old family jewels. And he goes for the pin. No way that was going to put him away. Just make him mad. Off the ropes. And Kasai hits him with a devastating lariat. Bringing Gage to his feet. Another lariat. Strong style. Bringing some, bringing some, uh, some tips from back home. Belly to back suplex. Beautifully executed. But Gage is to his feet almost immediately. Straight up brain buster from, uh, from Kasai there. Both men laid out for now. Here comes Gage with that devastating running power bomb. This is how he won the first round match he was in. Very close to a three count. Would have been embarrassing for Kasai to have made it this far and been pinned six minutes into the uh, into the semifinal match, but was not meant to be. Kasai doing a little taunt, playing to the crowd there. J jump! Oh, Gage scouting that move out pretty well. Kasai going for the brain buster once more, just. Because I was focused on that head of gauges. Right into the fluorescent tubes with the Kasai. Jab combination from uh, from from Gage. Who's uh, probably freaks out. Uh, with an implant DDT from Kasai. Could be the end of this match. One. Two. 2.9. Very close. Knife edge shot from Gage. And Gage reverses the Irish whip. Hits him with that shoulder block. Contemplating what weapon he would like to destroy Kasai with, I'm guessing. Off the ropes with both of them. Straight shot to the to the old mush from Kasai's elbow. And a schoolboy roll up. One, two, two point nine. Again, another embarrassing way to go out, having gotten this far in the tournament. A flash pinfall would be a, uh, well, just egg on the face in my opinion. And the fork makes another appearance, just jabbing into Kasai's head, gauges with that with that implement. Excessive headbutts. Kasai brings Gage to his feet. Off the ropes with Kasai and up and over. Gage seemingly uh, sh <laughs> shuffling through all his choice of weapons. And that might be it. That's his one, two, three. That's it. Kasai has been eliminated 10 minutes and three seconds in. Nick Gage, this might be the, the, the shortest match yet. But that, uh, that power slam uh, pinning combination was enough to get Gage to the, to the finals of this tournament. June Kasai has been eliminated. What a match. Uh, next up we have in the semifinals, we have Terry Funk versus Bruiser Brody. This is gonna be uh This is gonna be one for the ages. Let's see who let's see who uh, comes out on top. Alright, Funk. Brody displaying a little bit more aggression than he possibly has been in the past times he's been uh, wrestling. Uh, throughout this, this throughout this entire tournament, Brody has been on the receiving end of hellacious beatings from both John Zandig and Zandig's former uh, protege, wife beater. But uh, Funk is uh, now going for the early pinfall. Uh, yeah, did not even get a two count with that one. Not surprising. As Brody has taken already severe punishment in the past. Uh, couple of matches we know his threshold for pain is very high Bro Brody has has hold of that chair but doesn't do much with it power slam to funk running power slam 
They tie up and ooh, running. Ooh, uh, I'm sorry. A uh, 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 shoulder breaker from uh, from from Funk goes for that early pinfall once more. Just a just a single uh, count there. Funk doesn't. I hope Funk doesn't honestly believe he can end this match two minutes in. No, he goes for the pin again. Clearly, Funk is uh, shook by uh, Bruiser. One, two. That was a very powerful slam there. That could have been the end, but... A little bit of a Texas jab from uh, Funk, ending with a hell of a right hook. He's going for that pin once more. Two. Funk, perhaps Funk is just uh, <coughs> playing, playing the numbers game here. Maybe he's just thinking, hey... If I pin this guy enough, at least he's going to forget to kick out one of these times, right? Exchange of blows here. Both men go in the distance, but Funk ultimately laying Bro Brody out. Into the, into the light tubes with Brody. And Funk is just hammering those headbutts in. And, and Brody has been busted open. Running power slam from Brody. Goes off the ropes and double knees to the sternum. That was what put his last opponent away. But not Terry Funk. The sheriff of Amarillo, Texas. Doesn't go down that easy. Running bulldog from uh, Terry Funk and Mountain Punches here. Brody slaps him away. Again into the light tubes. Brody is having a having a rough time of this. Goes for that slam again. One, two, no, two point nine. Very very dangerous for Funk though. He should keep one, two. Funk should keep in mind that uh, that's a very ooh dangerous count and uh, Brody deposited out in the C four. This could spell the end of it for him. That's a real that's a real game changer when that when that happens. However, we have seen Bruiser Brody fight from underneath in the past two matches and come out on top. Maybe this is just his strategy, a little bit of a rope-a-dope situation. Lure them into a false sense of security by, by getting punched in the face a whole lot and bleeding all over them. And again, Terry Funk with those signature Texas jabs. But Brody's to his feet almost immediately, and there goes Terry Funk out into the C4. The playing field has now been leveled. Both men have seen the C4 explosions. Up close and personal. Here comes a pile driver from Bruiser Brody. He's got the baseball bat. And a strike right to the back of the head. Vicious headbutts from Funk. And off the ropes. Doesn't do anything, however. Doesn't really take advantage of that. Bruiser Brody and double knees to the back of the neck. <coughs> no pinning attempt, however. Straight up punch from uh, Terry Funk going for that spinning toe hold. But Brody just knocks him off. Not ready to give up. Not ready to, uh, to admit defeat. Running Bulldog from Funk. Again, that spinning toe hold. He's softening that leg up. Perhaps looking for a submission victory in this contest. There's Brody over in the, su in the vertical suplex. Again, he is working the hell out of that leg. Brody refuses to give up, however. Shoulder breaker from Funk. And a uh, shoulder check there. Again, another spinning toe hold. He does this enough, and Bruiser is just... He's bound to give up at some point. Running Bulldog once more. Just keeping Brody off of his feet. I don't think Brody's been on his feet for the past two minutes. Oh, there's Brody. Speak of the devil, he has now made it to his feet. <coughs> After the fourth spinning toe hold, which failed to yield any positive results for Funk. And a jumping pile driver to Funk. Here comes Brody with those double knees. Yep. Right on the chest, he's going for the pin. This could be it. One, two, three. Brody 
this has been this has been just a hell of a tournament for Bruiser Brody. I mean, he is just in every single match he's been in. He's looked like he's gonna fail. He he's looked like he's just set up to be the loser, but every single time he fights from underneath and he powers through. Impressive victory on uh, all of Brody's victories thus far have been incredibly impressive. Great match. And that's the end of the that's that's the end of the semifinals. The next the only uh, match left is Nick Gage versus Bruiser Brody, and I mean, who's going to come out on top on in, in that that contest? Both men have fought have so far been in very one sided matches and managed to uh, persevere, come out on top. Um, if you want to see the conclusion, you're going to have to wait till next time, unfortunately. But uh, be sure to tune in for the exciting conclusion of Alex's tournament of heinous ouchies and boo-boos. The Landmine Deathmatch Tournament to determine who is King Death. See you next time.